Good morning from Malaysia. So I've been meaning to do a recap or at least an update on my uh, experience with neuroplastic pain or what Dr. Sano called tension myositis syndrome. Just a recap. Basically, I've been dealing with chronic pain, specifically my back pain and my hip pain for over a year now. It's not terrible in the sense that I can still carry out daily activities, but it's consistently there. It came to a point where um, I couldn't walk without pain. It's uh, my hips were hurt, my back were hurt a lot. And I also couldn't sleep properly on my mattress. You know, I just, um, yeah, I, I literally could not sleep at all. So a couple of months ago, about two and a half months ago, I think, I decided to get help. I went to physiotherapy and somehow I came across a video by Chris Sainz. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. And that sparked my memory about Dr. Sarno. You see, I bought Dr. Sarno's book, Healing Back Pain, ages ago, you know, um, and it healed my shoulder pain or rather, you know, after reading it, my shoulder pain went away dramatically. I didn't make the connection then, but I remember thinking that, oh, that's funny. After reading this book, my shoulder pain went away. For some reason, after uh, watching Chris's video, I just realized why, um, what emotional pain I was going through. You know, that time I was uh, actually not dealing with an issue. I have suppressed it to the extent where I don't want to talk about it, don't want to think about it, don't even want to write about it. Uh, it's always been a habit of mine. to deal, That's how I deal with my own problems. I suppress it and I ignore it, uh, which is not a good idea, of course, but it seemed to serve me well in the sense that as a result, I don't feel any um, anxiety or depression or whatever. But unbeknownst to me, all this suppress emotion was going literally to my muscles and my bones that's what i discovered so i watched chris's video and i remembered what emotional pain i was suppressing and i cried you know uh, first time i cried in months or first time i acknowledged that emotional pain in months and my pain dropped by 70 percent just like that after i released the tears and i was so shocked by it that I actually did that video later. I was just so shocked by it. Like, how, how could the pain just disappear like that? You know, it was so bad to the point where I couldn't lie on my back, I couldn't lie on my side. And then, zoop, the pain went down. So I thought there was something there, you know? Um, so my pain was like down to almost 20%, 10% for a couple of days after making that video. And it almost as if just to spite me right after I made that video, it flared up <laughs> like in a big way like really really painful and i'm like thinking what is up you know and i was so disappointed like uh apparently this is pretty normal it's called extinction pain you know where your brain just decides to okay i'll ramp up the pain just to distract her further you know uh the pain eventually went away at least to a manageable level about 30 40 percent but it didn't completely go away so i began reading more and more about um this tension myositis syndrome and i really went on a deep dive i read a lot um but one of the books that really helped me was the way out a revolutionary scientifically proven approach to healing chronic pain and uh, this was written by the founder of the curable app now the app is actually an app for chronic pain sufferers and i tried it out and actually one of the rare apps that I actually paid for uh, through the app, I learned a few techniques on how to deal with chronic pain, uh, such as journaling, somatic tracking. Yeah, um, I hate journaling. You know, I, I really hate writing about my problems. I find it, I don't like whining in general. <laughs> so I don't like to, to whine to people. If I whine to people, that means that I'm really above my limit, you know, and I really need to talk to someone and I don't journal. I'm trying to change that. Okay, so I tried journaling. Um, 
I also read up about various techniques in journaling and figured out that maybe I was journaling wrong. And I think I was because I was just rehashing painful events over and over again without a resolution. So it was just re-triggering me over and over again. No wonder I did not enjoy the experience. So I read a book about expressive writing. Now, all these are resources that I'm citing, I will put in the description so that it'll help you. So I tried expressive writing, you know, I decided to write about my emotional pain or the event that I was dreading, basically. Um, I wouldn't say that it healed me completely, but my pain did go away a couple of days later as well. But my theory was, you see, I've been dreading one event for months, like half a year, and that anxiety has been building up without me realizing it. My theory was that once that event passes, my pain will go away. Okay, so I did somatic tracking also, which is like where you monitor your pain through uh, an observer's lens. It's a pretty hard to describe, but you just uh, search on YouTube. There are several great guides here. I will also include a link to a super great guide I, I use to understand somatic tracking. Between somatic tracking and journaling, I think somatic tracking works the best for me Maybe because I hate journaling so much. I don't know, but I think generally has its place. I was also listening to podcasts, you know, um, the curable app people, they actually did a number of podcasts where they interviewed uh, people who healed from chronic pain. And that some, does something to my brain for some reason, it's as if it's convincing my brain that this is real. But during this whole period, I didn't really write, recover 100%. There were days where the pain flares up and I'd be like, oh my God, what did I do, you know? Um, but I, the one thing about me is that I don't dwell for very long and I think that helps a lot. I can also ignore pain very well um, to the point where it's a problem in my life. Like I can ignore a pain till it gets so bad, you know, and that's not advisable. If you have pain at all, go and say doctor, don't ignore it. So in some perverse way, my ability to ignore pain and just don't think of it seriously helps a, helped a lot in my recovery. And that's one thing that the curable people emphasize again and again, that the reason why your chronic pain is there is because you catastrophize about it, you think about it 24 seven, you get obsessive about it. And I cannot deny that there were times where I felt very annoyed, helpless and all that, like, oh, why isn't this going away? Why is this flare up here? What's gonna happen? ETC, ETC, ETC. But I cut it short and I just go on with my life. Um, one thing I noticed about the community, if you tend to get triggered by people talking about pain symptoms, don't don't join the forums. <laughs> I joined a couple of forums and I realized that all they did was talk about pain, you know, and I didn't find that helpful to me. Like, uh, like people will say, come to the forum and say, oh, who has healed from this and that pain? Or who has healed from that and that pain? And I totally get it, you know, especially if you have been dealing with chronic pain for years and years, you just want some hope that you're all right. But I think that's part of the problem as well. You gotta get obsessive about pain. Like I said, this whole journey has made me realize how mind body it is, you know. Speaking of mind body, I also did physiotherapy, even though uh, a big num a large number of the community doesn't encourage you to do that because it's sort of like telling your brain that you are not well, there's something physically wrong with you. But I kind of don't believe that completely. Um, I think it's necessary to do physio. Uh, so I did physio uh, as well, but not very consistently, to be honest. In fact, if I were to admit, if I would be very honest with you guys, I did not do any of this consistently. I did not journal consistently. I did not do somatic tracking consistently. I listened to apps very consistently, though, the, the podcast. Uh, and I... I all that research, you know, that I did, the books I read, yeah, I did that pretty consistently, but I wasn't obsessive as well with the things I did to heal, so to speak. I was afraid of a, an event for months and months and months, and I was suppressing that anxiety I felt about the event. So my theory was, once the event passed, I should recover, right? So the event came, it wasn't as bad as I thought, and it passed. 
And I, I was just disappointed that the pain didn't disappear the next day. But the pain did disappear in a week. So now I have no pain, literally no pain when I walk. I can walk for hours, okay, not hours, an hour or two, you know, I can uh, sit down cross-legged again. I can lie on my bed without discomfort. I still have a bit of um, stiffness, but that I attribute to uh, not stretching a lot, being inconsistent with my PT exercises, you know. I think there's no denying the fact that sometimes there are physical reasons for your aches and pains, all right? My physical reason is I sit too much and um, and I don't stretch, you know, uh, I don't stretch properly, I don't stretch before I work out and things like that. Um, and I'm not very flexible as I used to be. I used to be very much more flexible than now. But due to the pandemic and due to sitting down so much, due to remote working, perhaps, which forced me to sit down a little bit more and being more inactive, um, I develop a lot of um, uh, muscle tightness, which I should overcome. So I think there's um, a lot of um, benefit in doing physio while you're doing this whole mind body healing thing. That's my opinion, right? I don't know if you're that per kind of person, however, that if you do physio, your brain is convinced that there's something wrong with you. If you're that sort of person, maybe it's not helpful. I don't know. But whatever it is, you need to figure out your own journey. And I think that's the frustrating thing about the whole uh, neuroplastic pain recovery thing is that there is no one template in healing you got to find it yourself and there's no convenient pill to pop or convenient exercises to do to get over your healing. It's somehow using dealing with your mind is not as straightforward and that can be a very frustrating process. Like, for example, I had a recent flare up recently, like really bad, like reminded me of the time before I discovered Dr. rediscovered Dr. Sun again. It was that bad. I couldn't sleep because it was so painful. But I did freak out about it. You know, the, the funny part about it was like, when I had that flare up, I was like, what in the world is happening? You know, I didn't do anything strenuous. I just went for a walk like, walk like I usually did. Okay, a bit longer than I usually did. That shouldn't cause me so much pain. And I was like, okay, okay, what did Dr. Sonner say? Dr. Sonner said, each time you have a flare or a pain, you ask, he asks you to think uh, psychologically. That means find out what's the psychological cause of your pain. And you know, I sat down for almost half a day thinking, what am I anxious about? I can't think of anything that I was anxious about. Well, I was very frustrated. Then towards the end of the day, I realized, oh, I had an upcoming stressful event on Saturday. It was very stressful. I was stressing the whole month about it. Oh, <laughs> so I, I have a tendency to bury my feelings or not even feel my feelings, you know, and when I don't feel my feelings, it goes to my body. And interestingly enough, after I realized that, of course, uh, the pain went away in a day or two, not weeks that like I had feared, worried about. Um, and I felt the full blast of anxiety. <laughs> So much so that in the, in the next few days, I was really down and depressed because, you know, finally I was feeling the emotions. So there is something to this neuroplastic pain thing. And if you're the sort of person that likes to, uh, or rather has the habit of suppressing your emotions or not feeling it or ignoring stuff, you could be susceptible to it. And I don't think it's like a weakness. It's just how your body copes, I guess. So moving forward, what am I doing now? I'm trying to learn better ways to cope besides ignoring my feelings and ignoring my triggers, whatever. I'm taking up journaling even though I hate it. <laughs> I'm taking up somatic tracking. But most of all, uh, besides also buying a stretching course, I mo most of all, I, I began moving again. I just decided not to be afraid of moving, just move and move. So I walk a lot. I, I do my yoga, my body balance, you know. Um, I remind myself now, you got to keep moving and don't sit too long. Uh, just 
walk as much as you can. So I, I actually have timers on my phone now to remind me to get up and walk. I didn't used to have that because when I was working in an office, I work hybrid now, by the way. When I was working in an office, I was, I was always getting up and going somewhere because uh, I'm that sort of person. I can't stand sitting still and I take uh, lots of breaks. That helped a lot. But when you're remote working and your apartment is a, in a rather isolated place where you cannot just pop out for a walk, yeah, you end up sitting a lot, you know. So I had to break that habit. So, yeah, so this is my update and I hope it helps. Um, if you are dealing with this right now, uh, I'm really sorry. I know it's, it really sucks, you know, um, but there's a way out, okay? But you must uh, make sure that your pain is not from a physical cause. Um, go for a thorough checkup first before you take up this thing because uh, we cannot deny the fact that some pain is physical. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I hope this helps you and do leave your comments if you've got any questions. See you soon.